Can I ask you about forward momentum? Because one of the things that I've always admired about you is that you speak boldly and ahead of the curve often on many things and especially to do with technology. I have a very vivid memory of you uh, doing a presentation on the value of um, 3D at a time when there were a lot of people suggesting it wasn't going to be the future of theatrical distribution. So can, well, you, can you talk about how you... Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, which is when, you know, when 3D came along, um, I, I, you know, I was, I went and I saw Bob Zemeckis' um, movie, um, somebody shout it out. Polar, Polar Express. Express, thank you so much. Senior moment. Um, so I went, and I went down uh, in Los Angeles, there's a, on the 405, down the 405, there's this great IMAX uh, theater there. I think it's the biggest one in in, uh, in LA. And I went and I saw Polar Express. I went on myself one Saturday morning the, when I, on opening weekend. And I actually found it one of the most exhilarating experiences in watching a, a movie that I had ever had before. And again, it's a perfect example. It's not a perfect movie and it's got things that don't work about it, but there were things that were amazing. But I found it the most immersive experience I'd ever had in a movie theater. It just felt like I was in the film. Mm -hmm. And I walked out of that and I said, well, that just, that just ups the ante here for what's possible. And in the world of wanting to exceed the expectations of people coming to see our movie, I thought, we got to go figure that out. That is, that is, so I got all of our teams together, got all of our tech teams together, and I said, we're going to do this. And, uh, you know, it started actually a very good collaboration because at exactly the same time, Jim Cameron was mm -hmm. sort of doing the same on the live action side of the business. And we shared a lot of tools and a lot of uh, uh, people that were uh, advising both of us on it. And uh, we went out and we made, you know, Monsters vs. Aliens, which was in now the spring of 2009. And to me, I, I believed that 3D was a new set of tools to put in the hands of storytellers to enhance immersive nature of, of, of what we could do in, in, in our storytelling. And, um, you know, it's like adding a whole bunch of tools to a toolbox in this in it. And I thought that we could deliver to our customers a premium experience and something that would be worth uh, them paying a premium for. And so I, I have to say with the absolute highest of ambitions, that's what we set out to do with, with each one of our movies. And by the way, we still do it today. When you see, you know, How to Train Your Dragon, you know, uh, you know Dean and his creative team you have no idea how much effort and how much time they put into making sure that the 3D version of that movie um, just pushes the envelope and the experience mm -hmm. in this and 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 there's a tremendous effort put in into that creatively and I think it makes his movie better um, unfortunately the industry as a whole did not have quite the same level of ambition that Jim Cameron had for the live action business. We had, there are some phenomenal movies that have been made, mm -hmm. Gravity and Life of, Pi. Life of Pi. I mean, those were, God, they were just, I mean, you know, my heart was like beaten mm -hmm. when watching movies like that in a, mm -hmm. in a theater in it. It's just, it's such a, an, a, an excitement to it in it. And so, but unfortunately, I think if you take our industry as a whole, um, we, we, we hit a low benchmark and we lost the confidence and we lost the enthusiasm and we lost the trust of the audience. Of the audience yeah. yeah. And when you lose that trust, it's, it's very, very hard to, to, to gain it back. Now, today, for people to go see a 3D movie, they, they need to somebody needs to tell them it's exceptional. They need to hear it either mm -hmm. by word of mouth or by critical acclaim or mm -hmm. something because it's not what I thought could actually, you know, sort of raise the bar of what you can get here in a theater versus what you can get on your television set at home was a 
great thing for the industry, for the mm -hmm. industry as a whole to innovate itself to <clears throat> a higher, better quality experience, not replicatable mm -hmm. in a home environment, I thought would be fantastic for the industry, for all of us. I thought we would all, the, you know, our audience would be rewarded for it and the business would be rewarded for it. And by the way, not everybody, we, but we've always had 2D versions of it. We don't, people don't want to, you know, if they can't afford it, we don't want to deny them the mm -hmm. movie. Our 2D versions are better for having made them in 3D mm -hmm. than to, and for them to exist at it. So, you know, I can only look back and say, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed in that I don't think we ever realized the full opportunity of, of, mm -hmm. of 3D. I don't think it's going away. Yeah. Um, I, happy to wager a bet with anybody that wants that when Jim Cameron comes back with uh, you know the next chapters of Avatar mm -hmm. there's not a person on the planet that goes to movies that isn't going to go see that movie yeah. in 3D yeah. and yeah. you know at least if they can afford to.